why should mayors and citizens adopt participatory budgeting? Mayors and citizens adopt uh, participatory budgeting because they have no choice. If they want to improve their life, if they want to change the quality of, 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 of life in the cities, if they want uh, youth have employment, if they want citizens in the poor neighborhood get access to water, portable water, to education, if they want women improve their income doing uh, uh, generative activities, then they don't have the choice between doing perspective budgeting or not. Because perspective budgeting is what? It's a political decision, but it's also a popular engagement, citizens with the mayor together to find how they can mobilize their own resource. We are talking about local resources. We are not talking about the resources coming from donors, coming from only state or uh, private sectors. We are talking about the contribution of the citizen. We are talking about taxes about uh, what the nature gives to the community. And the main challenge is how we can use it in a good manner so that when we spend a money, that expenditure brings something new in the life of the citizens. And then the mayor cannot do it itself in the office. Bureaucracy cannot change anything at that level. And then the citizen also cannot as you, we can see in some situations, humanitarian and urgent situation cannot build a, a, a sustainable development. So we have to create a space on, in which citizens with mayor have to meet to first of all make a sort of assessment of what is happened in the city. What do they have? What is lacking? What they can improve? And also, they have, during that meeting, to imagine also the, the strategy, the alternative to mobilize the resources and then to use those resources to implement new projects that can bring change, that can bring hope within the citizens. So there is no choice between doing perspective budgeting or not. For us, it is a new chance, it is a necessary, it is a necessary, it is, nece it is a necessary uh, alternative uh, in the situation where there is no state, so there is no, nothing you can wait from a person coming from, uh, uh, from, from, from foreign uh, uh, community, you have to organize yourself and that's why we think mayors in African countries, in Cameroon countries, mayors have to mobilize themselves with their citizens to implement participatory budgeting. Can you tell me about the growth and development of participatory budgeting in Africa? Where did it originate? How has it grown? And in what direction do you see it going? The, the growth of uh, participatory budgeting start in 2003 in Yaoundé uh, at the uh, Africity Summit. That time was organized by CGLUA, that is the, 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 as the African, the Pan-African Association of Local Authorities. They were meeting in Yaoundé for their triennial forums and at that occasion, we organized a special session with uh, some person like Jean-Pierre Elombasi, who is the general secretary of that association now, with uh, people like uh, Yves Caban. And uh, we succeed in bringing Yaoundé in Africa for the first time, mayors of Latin America involving in change processes in their community. And I was personally interested by that issues of perspective budgeting, because before that date, before 2003, I met with some of them in an international forum in Paris, 1999, and I heard about perspective budgeting. I say, 
this thing can help Africa improve the way they use their money. In our context, more than 60% of public resources are mismanaged because lack of transparency, because lack of participation, because lack of accountability. When I heard about patriotic budgeting, and I heard about the fundament of patriotic budgeting, I said this thing can help our country. It can help Africa to improve the way they use their own resources. Poverty is not the issue of the, the quantity of the resources. It, it is also a, a it is also a, an issue related to how the, the, the minimum you have, how do you use it? And then I started sharing my experience and working with Yves Caban, Jean-Pierre Elombasi, and more people working in, on, on this subject in the world. And then in 2003, this work enabled us to organize special session. Three mayors of Latin America were in Yaoundé, and then we bring hundreds of other mayors in Africa. And after our special session, they signed an agreement. Five of them signed an agreement. Five, those five mayors were Cameroonians mayors with Latin American Association, with the, the Pan-African Association of local authorities, and also with Latin American Association of Mayor in promoting participatory budgeting. Then after Free Cities 2004, we started study in two local councils in Cameroon. Bacham, who it, it, that is a council in the West region, and also Ezenduan, who, who is situated in Ezendu, situated in the center near of Yaoundé. Two mayors, two amongst five, who have signed the agreement, then decided to start participatory budgeting with their own resources. They, we, was, we were not talking about resources coming from donors. We, we are we talking at that time and we're still talking about perspective budgeting regarding the local, the, 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 the resource proper, the proper resources of local community, of local councils. Then we do the study to design how the perspective budgeting in Africa can look. Because it was not, it, it was easier to just say, we, are, we, wa we want to do it like we, s we see in Porto Alegre. But I think Porto Alegre is not Yaoundé, and Yaoundé is not Porto Alegre. And when you talk about local council like Agent Duan with 12,000 people living without any resources, without any organization, there is no institution, uh, there is no uh, traditional institution that can take the lead on those type of things. So we have to, we think that at that time it was important to organize people, bring them together be, and facilitate the discussion to see how they can design, what vision they can give to passport budgeting, with what objective, what they want to change in their own community. That study takes three or four months. And after we restitute the, the results of the studies, and then the mayor decide to do the passport budgeting. It was not the same in Bacham as in uh, Edendua. And then we launched the first forums, popular forums, on passport budgeting during the month of August 2004 in those two local councils. The amount we were talking about was for Edendua 10 million CFA francs, that means about uh, $20,000. And in Bacham, it was at least both, around $40,000. And we organized popular forums, we organized delegate forums, and at the end we organized a general assembly of patriotic budgeting in each of those two local councils. The priority chosen by the citizens 
were water in, the, in those two councils because, for example, Ejendwa at that time have no point, no, no water supply point. 11 villages, 12,000 people living without any solution to get access to water that is clean. And in Bacham, it was the same situation. Then in 2005, we started with the cycle of the implementation of the budget. We organized people, citizens, to follow up what the mayor started to implement. And at the end of 2005, I think Ejendwan built three portable water points for the first time. It was like a feast when the mayor presents those. And he did it with the resources of the municipality. Because before, the, the mayor was thinking that to do that type of project, you need a lot of money. You need the intervention of state. You need to go to donors. But bringing together cultural and social capital of the, uh, the, the own community, he found that in the community, there were some specialists that can freely help the municipality to structure the project and then to follow up the implementation. He found that in the community, in the, that rural community, there were some technicians able to, to build the water supply, supply point. And he, the, he used those resources, local resources, and with the, 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 the money transferred by the state to local initiative, they use it to build three portable points at the end of 2005. And the same situation happened in Bacham, in the West region. The mayor launched a project of water supply. In Bacham, it, it takes a lot of time because it was, a, 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 I think, a great realization, needing more, more uh, money, more resources than in the agenda one. But the mayor take the, 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 the uh, revenue of the proper revenue of the council as a contribution, as a local contribution, and then he succeeds in bringing more money from state ministry and from Belgium cooperation, and he realized three, three, uh, uh, three years after, Bacham get access to water supply network. That was a great re achievement of the passport budgeting for the first period. In two council two, uh, uh, in 2003, and uh, today we are talking about 40, 40 council in Cameroon, 116 council in Africa. And uh, the future, I think, for Cameroon is to cover by the end of 2016 the whole local council of Cameroon. And we are lobbying, we are, tra we are working with institutions, with universities, with uh, social movement to make, to bring our government on board on, on this issue. And I think when the perspective budgeting will be registered as an access for public policies, officially by the central government, the thing will go faster. And I'm sure with uh, the engagement of more institutions, that objective can be achieved. How, how can donors, international donors, play a constructive role in the growth and development of PB in Africa? because this is a very local and community-led yeah. development. How, how can donors play a key role in promoting perpetuity budgeting in Africa? I will say, uh, in Africa, there is not uh, a lot of opportunity to exchange between citizens. Cameroon citizens, those have 
many opportunities to exchange with Chadian citizens. Chadian citizens don't, those have many, don't have many opportunities to exchange with Saint African citizens. And I think the rule of donors at the starting point and today was to facilitate the exchange between citizens, between mayors, and also between professionals engaged to promote the passport budgeting. Because to travel, you know, the African continent is the one of thing, the five continents in which traffic area, uh, uh, international traffic is very low. There is the, the, the condition of, of traveling, tra travel from Yaoundé to, to Abidjan. You can go to, to London, you can go to the US and come back. Why people are still travel in their own country. So the donors and international uh, uh, partners play a key role by supporting financially, by supporting uh, uh, economically the participation of Africans in some international events on passport budgeting, but also in Africa, they support those amongst us who propose some opportunity to bring together and to mobilize people, train them on what is participatory budgeting, what participatory budgeting can help in our common life. So I think that is a key role of donors, facilitate exchange, facilitate peer exchange, experience, and also linking an opportunity for, for learning. This is not a, a process that requires huge sums of money. It is about using the money that you have better. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, in PB, the, the main issue is not the amount of money, because uh, you, you may have a lot of money, but how, how do you use it? And I think the key, uh, one of the key issues of patriotic budget that makes it very important for African countries, for African citizens, is uh, the aspect of patriotic budget insisting in the, the importance of your proper resources, of the local resources. You have to build your own process, your own perspective process on what you have and not on what you are hoping to have. And I think that is the key use of perspective budgeting. And it makes the perspective budgeting different from planning processes that you, that you can find in a lot of programs and projects in Africa. What is the relationship between participatory budgeting and democracy? I think uh, the relationship with, between participatory uh, budgeting and uh, uh, democracy is very close. I think you cannot talk about participatory budgeting without looking on that specific aspect of the process. Participatory budgeting is not, cannot be considered in our context as just a tool. It is not just a tool. It is, I think, a political concept. And uh, as a political concept, you, you have to make sure that when you are talking about, you are talking about what people, what citizens think about, and not only what do you think to use it for. And that is an, an interesting point for passport budgeting. And makes uh, this point makes the perspective budgeting different from planning techniques, planning processes you can have in more, more and more programs in Africa sometimes says, we are doing perspective budgeting. We are doing perspective budgeting. But when you come to see closely what is happening within those programs, you can find sometimes that those programs are just to plan. They are not interesting on the issues related to the impact of what they plan. You cannot talk about participatory budgeting this year, and next year you come and talk about it without 
giving the account of what happened since we meet last year. So perspective budgeting, it is a tool for local democracy. You cannot talk about perspective budgeting without talking about deliberation. It is not only the usual to bring uh, leaders, local leaders together and say, decide on the name of the whole community. No. Although the participation of leaders is very important, but you have to guarantee the free participation of all citizens and to make sure that you have taken some strategy to engage those who usually are excluded in participatory processes. So it, it needs engagement, it needs political will, but it also needs an effort to educate citizens. And if you look closely what usually happens in planning program, they are not interested to planning someone to take the floor, to speak. But in Africa, before looking if we have succeed in bringing water, we have also to look if we have had succeed to bring on board youth and women that are the majority of our population. Generally, they are illiterate. illiterate. They, are, they, have, they have no chance to go to school sometimes, but they know what they want. And we, we need to bring them on board. And that means we have to innovate also. Find a way that we can make, uh, make, make them free to speak. And also, we can make the mayor open to understand what has been saying by those who usually are considered as having nothing important to say. And I think that's why I'm saying that perspective budgeting is, first of all, an alternative to bring change in Africa, economic change, social change, cultural change. We cannot do it. And it, and it is not only because of the financial aspect. It is precisely because of that deliberative aspect of property budgeting. And in Africa, we need it. We need the deliberation. Since we become independent 15 years ago, there is no, we are talking a lot of time when we talk about civil and uh, civil rights, civil and political rights. They're talking about the election. It is not only the issue of electing people or electing projects. What happened before the election and what happened after the election? And if you go strictly to perspective budgeting with those concerns, with those interrogations, with those questions, you find that perspective budgeting is not only a tool, it's an alternative to promote democracy, to to, to improve as well as, as, well as uh, uh, perspective of the democracy, the democracy, the representative one, which is now very ill in Africa. What have the last 15 years of working to promote PB meant to you? What do you feel is the great, uh, your great achievement or what have, you, uh, what have you seen that makes you most happy? For the last 15 years, what makes me very happy when, when I'm talking about perspective budgeting uh, is the number of women and youth that can say, now I'm part of the process, I'm involved in the problems that are concerning, that are linking to my life. It is the number of uh, youth that express freely their opinion when you are talking about local policies, public, local, public and local policies. Before the perspective budgeting, for example, in Yaoundé 2 or in Yaoundé 6, people who are now participating was living in Yaoundé. The mayor also was the leader, the local leader in charge of managed local resources of all Yaoundé. But that mayor, when he came the first time in a neighborhood called Kobikok, it was because of participatory budgeting. 
And I remember some words he pronounced. He said, this, is this true that we are in Yaoundé? He was talking about people going to find water in the ground, potable water in the ground. He was talking about a quarter within you don't have any sanitation. You, have, you don't have any schools. He said, I didn't know that in Yaoundé you can find some place like this. And, and I am talking about the mayors. That kind of reaction makes me happy to be part of this change because it's an indicator that something is changing. He is, the mayor is changing the, the, the mind, the idea he, he has before concerning those type of neighborhood of, of, of quarters. I remember also some ladies saying, since the passport budgeting started, we are now drinking portable water in our, con in our quarters, in our neighborhood. That type of reaction makes us very free. And I can talk about some more people, youth, and also civil society organization. When they now ask public authority to, to, to give them some account, Mr. The Mayor, you informed us last year that for passport budget, you have to use this amount. Did you use it? And can you give us feedback about what you did? Those type of discussion makes us very happy to have been part of the process in our continent.